The Great One, The Rock, has come back to SmackDown. Finally, The Rock is done filming B-level movies, but you know what? It was Dwayne, so I'm not going to call him B-level. B-level? Mo- was well, The Mummy Returns? It was alright. The Mummy Returns. It was in the cinema, mate. I'd hardly call it B-level. I don't have a movie. Just because it's in the cinema doesn't mean it's not B-level. Yes, it does. B-level movies don't make the cinema, you absolute spanner. That's how you de- is that how you determine yeah. it? So what's a C-level movie? Fucking shite that's on the sci-fi channel. So a B-level straight to DVD? Pretty much. Aye, more or less, aye. Alright, I take it back to Wayne, but you tell you what, right, I, I'd happily put this episode of Smackdown straight on my VHS, because I, I enjoyed it. I liked I it. I enjoyed it too. Like, just don't be, don't be burying the rock. Michael Cole, Taz, hyping up the fact tonight that The Rock has came back. But we're kicking off the show with a mega tag team match with Edge and Hollywood Hulk Hogan taking on Billy and Chuck, right? And this is just going to be the formula of Edge is getting battered by Billy and Chuck. Not in that way. And then the Hulkster has to get tagged in. He does the taunts. He does the ears. He does the, the immortal hulking up and he just fucking batters both of them. That's pretty much how this match went, isn't down, it? Down, down, down. So it needs to be. Down, 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 down. doesn't need to be any different. It's exactly what it does on the tin. And it's a great way to open the show because the crowd are just into the Hulkster. And you know what? I think his tag title runs better than his world title run. It's only lasted like two, it's only been going two weeks, but I know, but I'm talking about the, the actual run. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not just looking at it to this point, but I feel like his world champion, he was all right, but I've, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't make anyone else champion, but the stuff with uh, Taker, I think he could have been a bit better the matches, but I mean, he is like, what, what, he's 50, 48, Hogan is at this point. That's, a pro- that's, that's pretty old. That's pretty old if you're a wee uh, Hulkster. But you know what? He's tarting up those pythons. He's laying the smack down with the legs. And uh, I'm glad him and Edge... It was good to see Edge get the rub off Hogan. You like that? I think Edge was already pretty popular. Like, But yeah, I mean, guess. Do you think Edge needed it? Well, anyone's going to benefit from it. Like, Yeah, but I would actually argue Edge was probably stronger just before this when he's beat Angle. Because Angle's been thrust into that main event picture. And Edge hasn't. So what, what's determined that? Did they feel like Edge needs another wee run with Hogan to, like, cement him a wee bit more? Or is it obviously because Angle's already the uh, established star? Ah, uh, uh, no. Um, if you're, it doesn't matter. Going into a tag team, if you're a singles wrestler on a tag team, uh, it, it does deflate your momentum. I think they should have kept Edge going. Just with his win over Angle. Obviously, he did get injured, and that's kind of what slowed down his momentum. Yeah, I, I would have liked... Jericho obviously took him out, so... That did play a factor, but yeah, I know for me, I, I think if Edge never got injured, he wouldn't be in this tag team. I think they just wanted to maybe bring him back and they're like, here, Hulk doesn't really want to work single matches. Let's stick him in a tag team. Hulk can do less work. Edge can benefit from being with the Hulk stuff. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. I feel like Edge could have done with like a, maybe a one-off match against Taker for the belt and I mean, Fenton Smackdown. I feel like that could have been good. I mean, have you seen like Jeff Hardy and Orton, especially if Orton can get a shot, can Edge not? But... You know, I mean, I've got no problems with Kurt Angle and Taker, but you've you seen, like, in the past couple of weeks, Taker and Angle, like, I mean, Angle made Angle actually makes The Undertaker submit. Absolutely insane. Stop. Stop. Stop right now. Because The Undertaker's going to talk to the big man backstage. Big John. Taker says, you keep your nose clean, John, tonight, and uh, you do not say anything before tonight's main event. We then cut... Tori Wilson's beach photo shoot. So obviously Molly Holly's got to stick her fat ass into the uh, the situation here, into the photo shoot, which took up all the screen. So there you go. Yeah, M- Molly's like, I don't have to flaunt my body. I've got respect. I'm a champion. You only got where you are by taking your clothes off. And then we've got Tori. She she says, well, if you didn't like that pose, you won't like this pose. And then she poses, but I mean, she didn't really take any more. She didn't really show any more skin or anything. It was just like a, a body pose. I didn't quite get it. But we get an, a challenge issued, and it's going to be Molly versus Tori Wilson tonight in the SmackDown Women's Championship. That's just match, the women's so. titles, mate. Raw doesn't have one back in 2002, all right? So that's fair enough. Well, is that fair enough? I retract the SmackDown part. Fair enough. Uh, a limousine shows up. We're thinking, who's getting out of this bad boy? It's Kurt Angle and... Chris Jericho. I wasn't damn. expecting these two to get out of this, to be fair, but uh, whatever. It's, it's it just weird. doesn't really strike me. Those don't really strike me as two guys that would ride limos. Maybe Jericho during his like undisputed title run, but I feel like he's not really a limousine. He's... An angle and a limousine? <laughs> and I... these two together? Like, I know they're in the tag team match or whatever, but 
No, come on. Jericho felt like a, a third wheel here. He kind of did, didn't he? Yeah. Is he carrying like, even the, what was he doing? Carrying Angle's bags? Even the camera angle, you've got... The camera angle, ha ha. You've got Kurt Angle and Taker face to face, and then Jericho looking really small, just like kind of like saying these like really poor remarks to Taker. I think Jericho's run has been really poor since he lost the belt. No, it has been. I don't really think it picks up. I mean, I can't... Oh, I can't really think what Jericho does up until the Survivor Series Chamber match, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I could not tell you what he does, but you know I what? Jericho moves to Raw the better, in my opinion, because there's not a lot happening with him on SmackDown. But uh, they, 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 I, I enjoyed this segment. They throw Taker a bit of a beat down. Yeah, but Taker gives as good as he can. The, McMahon, the McMahon's like, split it up, damn it. Split it up. Jericho calls Taker the undertapper. I Which has got a cheap pop at the angle, but he didn't find anything. got nothing out of me. Like, I thought it was a really... Poor insult for Jericho, but Jericho seemed to enjoy it. Taker didn't enjoy it. Started a beatdown. Uh, beatdown didn't go too well from McMahon was there. I think Fit Finlay was there. There was a bunch of people there to uh, break this up. And then, Jay, then Undertaker goes to confront Cena, and he's like, where's your loyalty, kid? Where were you? Cena's shitting his pants. He's like, you, t- you told me to stay back here. You know, so it was, uh, Cena's right, though. He did. He did tell. Undertaker said, Don't, you better keep your ass in this locker Obviously, room. Cena felt like he... Uh, didn't have to worry about Undertaker. Undertaker had his own back tonight. But Big John, he was practicing. He was wrapping baby oil all over himself, damn it. And his wee green prototype shorts that I'm not really a fan of. No, that, this prototype gimmick isn't really going anywhere. You, you can definitely tell there's a reason why he disappears off TV for a, I guess he a just, while. Could he really have debuted it, though, with the Fogonomics gimmick? I mean, I guess why he could. Why not? I guess he could have, but I feel like the fact that he's green well, and they've actually got him dressed up in green just I, suits it. His debut was great, but the problem is, it's like they didn't have anything else after that. Well, that, him, him saying Rufus. They're clearly like, giving him a rub here, though. Yeah, I know, but it's like <laughs> him slapping Angle and saying Ruthless Aggression, having a good match with Angle is good, but what's it, is he going to come out every week and just say Ruthless Aggression? Is he going to slap people every week and have decent matches every week? I don't know. Decent matches don't get well, you. Are you going to make B level movies? I don't know. Initially. A B level player. Ah, the Marine was in the cinemas, mate. The Marine was alright. Marine was decent. So was 12 rounds. 12 rounds. I feel like 12 right. rounds got a bit old after like the 7th round, but you know what? I'll give John the benefit of the doubt. I should have went for the knockout, I think. Round no, eight. I did, though. I think it did. Hey, John. It's round 8. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God, just kill her, man. <laughs> Gotta beat him on points. Beat him on points. Anyway, uh. Indecisive Tony, round. Tony Wilson, Molly Holly, women's title match. Uh, Clinic. Classic. Classic. Meltzer would probably give it 5 stars. Wasn't that good, actually. Melissa would probably give it a quarter of a star. This is a really long run that Molly Holly's going on here. I actually can't think when she loses it. But uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was all right. You know, Tori Wilson got powerbombed. One, two. The pin was a bit weird. It's like she powerbombed her. And then she went for a crucifix pin, but Cole called it a submission. And then the referee counted one, two, three. And it was like... But Tori Wilson wasn't even showing any signs of kicking out. It'd be like Undertaker hitting a tombstone and then trying to roll somebody up in a pin that they couldn't escape. Yeah, there's just no real need to she, do it. Yeah, Molly Holly did like a crucifix that put all her leverage on top of Tori so she couldn't like kick out, but she fucking completely sold the power bomb anyway, so she could have just done a normal pin and would have got the one, two, three anyway, but I mean, whatever. Uh, we then got... Devon Batista. Call my name. Dun, 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 dun. Rand, uh, you know what? Batista did a move on Mark Henry in this match that I thought was going to break the universe in two. Break the ring, break something. And somehow he, he actually managed to... I mean, it was a great move, but it, sh- it should have been the finish. It should have been. But, all, I mean, maybe, maybe, I mean, if this makes sense, if you're lo- if you're doing the move in ring, maybe it doesn't feel as good as it looks. So, therefore, obviously, though, they've obviously got the finish. You, you see where I'm coming from? Not really, no. No, obviously that move looked great, but at the end of the day, it was probably just meant to be a transitional move, but he hit it with so much more velocity than he probably intended to. Cause Mark well, Henry's probably because Mark Henry's got so much weight behind him, so Aye. therefore the impact's going to be a lot greater. Well, I get what you're saying. Then he wins with the spine buster, and the spine buster just doesn't look that good. No. But you know what? It was an all right match. Well, I think when you're hitting a spine buster on a bigger guy, it doesn't look that good. It's like any time you see Batista hit a spine buster on like Daddy V or Great Cali, it looks fucking shit. But see Batista, you can just see he's got a lot more to him than Mark. Mark Henry's been in the in Dyer Arena at this point for like six years. Batista's got velocity. Yeah, absolutely. Batista's got, he's got it. He's got like the speed, the, like impact when he hits a big move. Like see Mark Henry, he's just slow and sluggish. And he's always been that way. Mark Henry moves about the ring as if he is underwater. 
See, but if we're being completely honest, like I, I pro- Mark Henry's probably never had a great match. No. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Like to be honest, he was a really boring champ. And I, I think Batista should have had a better heel run. I think he should have. I think Batista could have had a really, really dominant heel by the time he was champion run. But by the time he went heel, it was end. He, he was, he was kind of acting like a bitch. Do he? what I want. Even though it was Triple H, but yeah, they all wanted to be Cena and stuff. He got duct like... taped to the, the ring post, which wasn't exactly ideal. But guess what, guys? The Rock has come back. He busts in with his uh, duffel bag. It's no Steve Blackman. Where's Steve Blackman? I haven't seen him in about 10 years. Oh, God. <laughs> He's been released for a long time. He's been released. We've got Hogan talking to Edge. How about it? WrestleMania 18? He was about to defeat The Rock. Toronto was on its feet. They were all there to see the Hulkster, not The Rock. And The Rock's just in the background of the shot mimicking The Hulkster. It was pretty funny, but it's also like... You can imagine Hogan taking this bad. Nash would take this bad. But the thing is, Hogan's actually telling the truth here. The crowd were on his side. They were chanting Hogan. They were not chanting Rocky. No, and that's why they had to change the entire... So, I mean, The Rock can sit here and pretend as if Hogan's talking trash and talking shit, but in reality, he's not. Hogan is telling the truth. The crowd, <laughs> the crowd cared for him, not The Rock. That is the truth. The crowd wanted Hogan to win, and he didn't win. Though. But The Rock is trying to say, "Ah, oh, that what you, you you're mishearing things." Oh, no. The crowd were chanting Rocky, Rocky. They weren't. They were chanting Hogan, Hogan. And then Rock goes to leave, and he like Hogan continues the story in his favor. And The Rock comes in, he's like, "What? Can't believe you're doing this again, Austin." Uh, we then see Kurt Angle confronting The Rock. So The Rock pretty busy here, getting involved in back-to-back back segments. It is. Uh, Kurt Angle basically goes on this like three-minute rant. It's like, why are you getting inserted into this match? And The Rock's like, who in the blue hell are you? You look like Kurt Angle. You smell like Kurt Angle. But there's something different about you. He's like, somebody got a hair. And The Rock does this. It's funny. Yeah. I feel like anyone else doing this, it just wouldn't fuck. It would Lame come. and cringe, but the rock yeah. doesn't. It, it kind of works. Kurt Angle can't believe it. Then uh, you know, it, it's good. I enjoyed all this. You've got Taker coming out as well. Uh, this is this is a main event. Fen- vengeance. Yes, yeah. triple threat. This match. is something to get you to fucking buy a pay per view. I'd pay it with my hard earned money. Like I mean, if Rock wasn't here, I feel like Edge could have been in it. I'm not saying Edge is anywhere near the level of the Rock, but I feel like the fact you had Edge and Angle feuding. And he wasn't in that tag team with Hogan. Could you have seen Edge fired in here a triple threat? 100%. And I feel like... But obviously, I think... Genuinely, I think if Edge didn't get injured and The Rock didn't come back for vengeance, I could have seen this happening. Yeah. But we we, we we know The Rock goes on to win, spoiler alert. So, would Edge have went on to win? Probably not. Uh, we then have Test taking on Rikishi, the Un-Americans. I still think the brand split feels a bit weird because like, SmackDown doesn't have a mid-card title. Yeah. And who, yeah, it kind of feels like there's, obviously there is a mid-card, but it feels like if you're in the mid-card, you're kind of like part of a faction, sort of thing. I feel like the world title has been more prominent on SmackDown than it has Raw, and I think that is because Raw has the Intercontinental Championship. I don't blame them. They had to bring the big gold belt in, man. I think this run of Undisputed, it worked. It's great seeing like Taker or like whoever's the champ. I just don't think long term it's viable. No, it's good for like a night, a six month period, but nothing more. Um, I believe here Rikishi defeats. Because what you really want is you really need feuds on both shows for the world belts. And Taker's been very active on both shows, but it's almost like a, on Raw, he's been having many feuds with people. Whereas you feel like on SmackDown, that's where he's been having the real title defences and, and the real yeah, feuds. Yeah, like we feuds against Jeff Hardy and Tommy Dreamer isn't exactly what he's doing on SmackDown. Yeah, so you feel you feel it's, all, it's almost like the world title is exclusive to SmackDown, but Taker's like, I'm, I'm such a good guy, I'll, I'll turn up on Raw sometimes and defend it as well. God damn right. So, the Un-Americans, un- though, they throw a beat down to Rikishi after the match. The Un-Americans are building some... Yeah, I'm surprised they just didn't stick Jericho in the Un-Americans. The I mean, match was very good. It was, but I'm not saying Jericho. I'm not saying the Un-Americans needed Jericho, but I'd, I'd argue at this point Jericho needs the Un-Americans. He's just doing nothing. Should he really be sitting in the corner of a shot, bad mouth and taker? Is that the height of Jericho? I feel like you had Jericho to Un-Americans, and it automatically just takes him up a peg. No, I think so. Possibly, but maybe they wanted to go with three guys that were more mid carders. True. Because right. it's almost like they've got Lance Storm as the leader and the talker. And I just don't see how that would play out if Jericho was in there. Christian's the man on the mic. 
Ah, but Lance Storm's obviously the guy that... Lance Storm is the leader. Which is weird. Now, this match was good. Testament for Pump Handle Slam, and Rikishi's fat ass kind of unbalanced him, and he almost was getting away from him, but then Test turned his body around and... Twirled his body around? Tw- twirled his body around and, and hit the Pump Handle Slam, so... I don't know how he'd done it, because honestly, it looked like a botch, 100%, but no, he somehow... Him and Batista whipping out the moves tonight. He somehow managed to save it and spin around and, and smash Rikishi into the mat, so good save for Test, and... Yeah, Rikishi may have picked up the win, but an Americans laid a beat down. I think they should have had Test win. Yeah. It's like, why can't I just win dirty? Win clean. Uh, Jericho meets McMahon again. When again, McMahon... this is all Jericho gets used for. Yeah, he's literally just interrupting McMahon when he's trying to fucking get off with Stacey Keebler. I feel like this has happened way too often over the past. Maybe it's a gimmick, I don't know. Maybe well, Obviously, it's a gimmick. It's funny, but, I mean, it's kind of something you'd give to, like, a... Like a bloody, I don't know, who do you, well, you, you give us to? I didn't really enjoy I didn't think this one was this funny. Basically, he walks in and McMahon's like, I want to put the tag team title on but you're against Hogan. I can't put, I can't, you're against Edge, and it would be unfair to put Edge in the same match. Twi- Why? Just do it, McMahon. When does McMahon ever care about be- being fair? Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck me. Especially when there were guys at heel. Um, so McMahon's like, would you be willing to step aside in order for the Un-Americans to have their tag team title match? And Jericho agrees. McMahon says he'll make it up to him. I'm going to trade you to Raw. <laughs> I'll make it up to you. Uh, then we go to some sort of restaurant and Jamie Noble, Nidhi and Taijiri, they're, they're making it as if they're living the high life. They're, they're dining out in style here, but in, in reality, they're eating fucking spaghetti bolognese. I mean, Tony <laughs> macaroni. <laughs> you know, it's like spaghetti. The cheapest thing you could probably buy, for God's sake. I I mean to Tajiri's the so what is Tajiri doing here? I know he's a tag team partner tonight. I but think he is like the heart, the handyman. He's the, the backup, the muscle. The Tajiri's the muscle. Uh, Tajiri is the muscle. He wanted sushi and he got spaghetti. I feel like they could have had some let's fucking still a quote of your book. I think it would have been interesting if they still had Tajiri and Tori Wilson together and they were going out in like double dates here with Jamie Noble and Nidia. Yeah, but that's that's all in the and past. And maybe Tajiri's trying to do with Tori what Jamie's doing with Nidia. Uh, that could have been some interesting TV. But they get the spaghetti and they're um, they're like sucking up the spaghetti on either side and they end up kissing in the middle. And Tajiri does it with Noble and Noble's like, "Hey, Tajiri, that's okay. Help yourself. It's all you can eat. Eat as much as Nidia as you want, as long as you help keep this cruiserweight title in my waist. This like, is taking us to the top." But except if it was a world title. <laughs> It's a fucking cruiserweight, mate. I mean, Tajiri had the cruiserweight title and it didn't get him much money. So why the fuck's it making Jimmy Noble a shitload of money? He must have been homeless or something. What was WCW paying him in the last days? I don't know, know but uh, Jimmy Noble, he's, he's loving life. He's got a trailer. <laughs> he's got spaghetti. What more could he ask for? Oops. He's got a skank of a girlfriend to get the guy. He's just loving it. He's Jimmy Noble, damn it. Damn My name's Jamie Noble. I'm a cool white champion. I've buried him in the past. But sorry. I like Noble. Uh, speaking of Noble, we get him and Tajiri up next, taking on the Hurricane and Billy Kidman. I've never liked Billy Kidman. He just bores the tits clean off of me. Yep. I can't believe this guy actually feuded with Hulk Hogan in WCW. What were they playing that's at? A, that's a, not the finger poke of doom. That's the real reason they went out of business. Man. Jamie no, and Billy, Billy Kidman there. Billy the Kid. What is going on? I don't know. Sucks. Anyway, Billy Kidman and the Hurricane win the tag team match and... Uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. The, the hurricane, I don't know, this whole thing with Nidia doesn't really it's do it for me. It's, it's kind of went dead in the water. Dead in the water. Then The Rock comes out and he's backstage and he addresses Kurt Angle and The Undertaker. He does bury the wee interview, the who in the blue hell. I think it, it's all right when you say it once, but see when you say it to everyone you meet in one night. No, yeah, it loses its appeal, Rock, so. It worked with Angle because it was like, here, you look like a fucking fud now. Nah, I'm so used to you, you were here. Whereas it just felt like The Rock was saying to, to this guy if they ran out of material. Yeah. Poor Rocky, need to improve or you'll get Ivan Dragged. Ivan Dragged to next week. But guess what? We've got a massive being affair up next. Jericho Angle, Cena Taker. See, yes. see, when you look at it, it just sounds like a, an epic main event. You know, you're not really taking into consideration that Cena at this point is a fucking nobody, a rookie. Jericho's a bit pish. And well, I'm going to take her pro- doing pretty well. But so. the name value alone just... And then the fact you've got The Rock sniffing about... Yeah. Just makes this match even better than what it had to be. But you know what? I think even... Cena's green, but he's still all right. The point where Cena gets thrown over the top rope... Like, right, and he just... Ah, he lands on his back. Pretty sure who was it? Angle? Angle, yeah. Angle throws him over the top rope. 
and he just absolutely. And like he, he takes it, he just lands back first on the outside. And like he I, sells it like Spike Dudley when he gets thrown in the Dudley Dog. The thing is, Spike Dudley's a wee small guy. He lands on his ass. I've seen him land on his ass and back. Like, just like a, yeah, it didn't look good. It's like, like a dead body. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he felt like a dead body after it. Uh, Taker is laying the beat down. It's two on one. Taker's uh, after the end of the match. Taker gets the win, but then it's a beat down and him. He's getting beat up by Jericho and Angle, but he overcomes it. And then The Rock comes out and. We get a bit of a brawl, really. The Rock starts beating up Angle, take us back to his feet. The Rock hits a bunch of rock bottoms. Yep, you've got Cena out there getting the rub off everybody, but not really doing anything because he, he, yeah, broke, Cena's just laying I out broke there. My ass. Cena's just laying on the outside at this point. Cena is, but I mean, this is what you want ending the show, man. This is exactly what should be ending the show. But The Rock looking strong until the dead man. The, the, I think they did a good job of protecting Taker. I feel like sometimes with this title run, heel run, he has looked a bit. Chicken shitty to a degree where he's been backing out of certain things like going into McMahon's office. Oh, for God's sake, Scooby Doo. McMahon's office is in the uh, the shitter. But you know what, guys? This was a pretty good episode of SmackDown. There wasn't too much. I think SmackDown is just far more consistent uh, this is than much uh, Monday Night Raw. And that's exhibit A of why we will never make it. Drink your Pepsi, damn it. But anyway, guys, I'm going to give this show... Pepsi, Phil. I'm going to give this show a 7 out of 10. What are you going to give? I'm also going to give it a 7. Good I feel show. It, enjoyable 7. I mean, it wasn't great. It was just kind of like solid It throughout. was lacking something to take it to the next Yeah, there was level. nothing spectacular on the show. It was just like a solid 7. Good 7. A good 7. But there's The Rock. Lots of good stuff. Nothing great. And that's where we're going to leave it, guys. So until then, peace.